Hello and welcome back. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys what the current state of the Strike Eagle is so everyone can see how far along it is. I'm not going to be showing any air-to-air -air stuff or air-to-ground stuff because other people have been showing that. I'm literally going to show you how it currently sits as of right now. And then we'll jump into F-15, we'll do some raw performance stuff, and I'll give my initial thoughts about it. Also, for now, I won't be posting any more how-tos or tutorials for this module since it's not officially released and things will probably change before it releases and then after it releases. Also, Razorn, they have actual real Strike Equal Guide doing the tutorials for them, so who else would you rather get your information from? Uh, the reason why I did the cold start was because of that Strike Eagle SME that Razorn has. He actually approved my checklist and said it's good to go. Uh, so let's go over the main menu for DCS. So instant action, well, before we do that, so everything right now, this is early access, is going to change when you guys actually get this in your hands. So instant action... This is what's available right now. There's not much. Again, it's going to change. Training. There's no training right now, so I'm not going to click on that. Again, that will come out when this module releases. Options. So I want to talk about audio. So a lot of people online and like Discord are saying that all the videos I watched, when the plane's an afterburner from the cockpit, is super loud. I have mine enabled to be loud, but for me, it's not loud at all. So. I don't know my settings are different from X, Y, and Z, whoever loaded on YouTube, but for me, mine's not loud. And let's go to special. I want to talk about two things here. So let's talk about view customization first. So you got a VR option, you got track IR option. So think of this as your as your pilot's neutral head position. So five will be the default position, like your pilot is in a neutral position. If you slide it like forward or backwards, I'm not sure which one's which. Uh, so like say zero is your pilot's head on the back of the headrest. And then for check IR users like myself, I was told to use eight, which is pretty good. So maybe eight's closer to the back of the headrest, but eight's pretty good. And then this one I want to talk about performance customization. So this is maximum number of threads used by radar in the background. So what I was told and explained if you have a newer CPU or a CPU that's like a higher performance CPU, you could run this almost maxed out without any issues. I've been running 12 with no issues, but for this video, I'll run 16 for you guys. Okay, so before we actually fly, we're going to go mission editor, we're going to look at some liveries, and then we're going to go look at some weapons that you can put on this thing, and then we'll fly it. Alright guys, so now we're in mission editor, so before we actually get into the weapons, we're going to go over liveries real quick. So there is a ton of liveries already available to this aircraft, and I think, don't quote me on this, that there's going to be a few more on release. So I'm not going to click on all of them because I'll take all day, but what I do want to go over is the clean versus combat. So let's set the clean one right now. So obviously this is a clean plane, so like say it's back on the state side, the air crews keep it nice and clean for dog and pony shows, but now that same plane is in a combat environment, so you got oil, you got dirt building up in panel lines, it's nice weathering effects. So it's nice little attention to detail that I like a lot. And then all the USA models, the engine nozzles, they don't have the turkey feathers on it. But if you go to Israel, their model has the turkey feathers on it. Just nice little attention to details. Alright, let's go back to USA. We're going to go over weapons. Uh, so if you guys fly the F-15C, the air-to-air -air loadout is going to be very familiar to you, but now we have bombs. And then speaking with the weapons, with early access, we don't have every weapon available yet. I know as it releases and after it releases, there will be more weapons coming to this aircraft. All right, so we got a missile rail. Then we got the training pods if you go to, like, Nevada. Bombs. Fuel tanks. Travel pods. Let's put a GB24 on here. This is a big, massive bomb. Uh, more missile rails. And then the training pod for Nevada. A bomb or bomb rack. So they actually have training munitions, which I think is pretty unique and kind of cool. So with this, with this pylon right here and this and the pylon right here, if you guys have two big of uh, payloads, they're going to cancel each other out. So we have a pretty big uh, GB24 here. Let's put some CBU-97s on it. They're going to cancel each other out. Even if it's like a fuel tank, it'll cancel each other out. All right, then if you want to load missiles, more travel pods, more missiles, more travel pods. Your nav flare pod. More bombs. 
fuel tanks, uh, travel pod, then you got a data link pod right here. So this is going to be for a air to ground weapon that's coming with a strike eagle either as it releases or shortly after it releases. Then you got a targeting pod. Uh, then everything from here is just going to be a reflection of what's on the other side. Uh, something I thought was kind of funny with the default loadout. So one side is ready for air to air combat and the other side is ready for air to ground combat. I just thought that was kind of funny. Alright, let's go over some more mission editor options. So you got these options here. Alright, now let's get in the cockpit. Alright guys, so now we're in the front seat of the Strike Eagle. This thing is already hot started. If you guys want to learn how to do a cold start procedure, I'll put my video on the top right of the screen. If you guys don't want to watch it, that's completely fine. Uh, so before we taxi and take off, we're going to look around the interior nice and slow. You guys look at the details. Maybe you'll see something you haven't seen before. These mirrors move individually as well. So something with the Wizzo as well, so you don't have to have the pilot body enabled for this. If you look left or right, then you go to the front seat, the head's going to be where you left it. But if you put the pilot body on, you're going to see him reaching for that grab bar and point himself as he looks to the left. Looking right. <laughs> so they fixed this, so remember this is early access, so they fixed it. So. The 3D model had a limitation where it couldn't reach the grab bar. Um, so yeah, now they fixed it, they got rid of the animation. But yeah, this kind of small attention to detail I think is really like amazing. Alright, now we're going to go over the 3D model. Alright, so, yeah, let's taxi. Alright, so I want to talk about the nozzle steering. So there's some conversation about it. So the nozzle steering is never turned off in this thing. And you can't turn it off, so it's always on. So there's some uh, options you can do on your HOTAS as well, like nozzle steering button on your HOTAS. So if you push it, you just get a higher turn rate, like so. Then there's a pinky paddle, so if you hold and depress like I am now, like it temporarily puts your uh, nose was steering to like a standby position, but if you let go, like say full right, uh, full right boot, like and let go, it's still gonna turn right. Okay, so also we have 30,000 pounds of fuel on board. So coming from like a lightweight fighter like a Mirage 2000 or like an F-16, where you have like 9,000 pounds of fuel, like 30,000 pounds is a freaking luxury. 
And like this with two bags on, and even without the bags on, I think it's like 22,000 pounds internally. That's still so much fuel. All right, let's line up here. Some pre-final stuff. This is not official. This is me doing how I want to do it. I'll put a HUD up here for you guys in case you can't see the brightness on this. Flaps are down, confirmed. Inlets are in auto. Green light on, we're good. Alright, so we got a lot of bombs on board. All the stores are filled. We have a ton of fuel, so we're a very heavy bird. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a full winter takeoff, obviously. And then we're going to stay between 500 to 1,000 feet of altitude, see how long it takes us to get to Mach, and then when we get to Mach, we're going to climb up to about 55 degree uh, pitch, see how long it takes us to get to 20,000 feet, and then we'll fly up there, do some talking, and then we'll come land. Okay, so take off trims on, wheel brake off, wheel, or parking brake off, wheel brakes on, throttle forward, takes a second to spool up, and we're going. Don't forget, I have the loud afterburner audio option uh, checked. Okay, so I'm going to start pulling aft on the stick. It's not going to start going nose up until about 180, and once it gets to 180, that's like when it takes off on its own. So doing aft back. Here it comes. And then, yep, just does it on its own. Alright, because we have takeoff trim, we have to trim forward. Kind of like an FC3 plane, like the Flanker, Fulcrum, and SC25. Right, 500 degrees, we're going to have to turn right to go down this valley. Nice slow pit turn. We're at 0.5, almost 0.6 Mach. 0.6 now. Seven. Point eight. Point nine. All right, we're at mod. Time to go up. Looking for 20,000, I'm going to roll it over. Twenty-five thousand. Keeping a burner like get some authority back into it. Yeah, all that and we're still at 26,000 pounds. Yeah, this thing's a beast. There's some backseat action for you guys. Uh, we'll turn left and we'll follow the coast. Alright, so let's talk about it. Uh, so, this is my personal opinion, honest review, I'm not being like told to read a script or anything or like held at gunpoint by Razvan, this is my honest feedback. Uh, so the goods and bads, so the goods, the module is pretty amazing, like yeah it's really really good. Um, when this actually re releases, it's probably going to be one of the modules I fly the most, like yeah no it's it's just amazing to fly. There's no really way to describe it. Like 
it looks amazing it feels amazing when you fly it just it's a joy to have as a buyer perspective like this thing is worth full price all day long if you guys got this for the pre-sale or the pre-order sale for like $34 I think it was like dude you pretty much sold this aircraft like even now as early access like this thing is great <laughs> yeah no it's it's great um downsides cons so this is me nitpicking like looking for something to find so let's talk about the maneuverability so BFM so like during dogfighting so obviously this is not meant to be a dogfighter and I understand that so if you ever get in that situation where you have a merge you're you might be better than me and like be able to survive but I have not been able to like win a single dogfight yet in this thing and that's against AI normally I'd be kicking AI's ass all day long but AI has been handing me my ass for like the past couple days. That could be me being used to like the Mirage's flyby wire system, but like <laughs> I, I'm not doing this thing justice with uh, BFM. Again, this thing is really heavy and it's not meant for BFM, but at the same time, it's like that's kind of a big downside. Uh, another one would be the HOTAS. So, again, this is me nitpicking. This is really not that big of a deal. So, with the HOTAS, so. It's kind of like an A-10 and an F-16 merged together, which could be bad, but it's not bad. It's just me not having enough time to learn it because of life. But, like, you have coolie switches. You got the castle switches. You got the back seat to learn. It's just a lot of stuff to, uh, to like, get over the hump. So if you guys ever flew the A-10C and you ever got over that, like, initial or you're doing that initial flying where you weren't used to the HOTAS yet and it took a while to get used to it, that's what this is. Again, it's not bad. This is me literally looking for something to find bad about the aircraft. But no, overall, this thing is really, really great. Like, I'm really enjoying it. Alright, so let's get down to, um, let's get down to 15,000 feet and we'll do some turning and performance. close enough let's get to 500 knots all right so i'm gonna get to 500 knots i'm gonna put burner in i'm gonna pull about five g's and just see how it turns all right here we go again i have the hud on the mfd and you can't see the hud on the screen or the hud in general all right there's five like look at that like the vertical stabilizers are shaking the wings are flexing just that kind of attention to details that sells me. Alright, back going down the coast, level off the wings, keep burner in until we get 500. Next one we'll do is going to be above 5 G's the whole time but now like there's really nothing to complain about this thing even like with the early access model like it's pretty good like Razgen themselves said they're ready to release it now and I believe them like it's pretty awesome okay so there's 500 all right burner left hand turn gonna be above 5 G's now, like, look at that just That's the plane telling you to stop. <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. Level the wings off. Keep it in burner to about 300. Then we'll get out of burner. Alright, so yeah. Let's bring it back to base. Base is behind us. About a four minute flight. <coughs> Excuse me. No, so yeah, this plane, like I said, I have nothing but good things to say about this thing. For the general public, like, I can't wait for you guys to get this thing. And I know y'all are really eager to get it. Trust me, I read the comments. I see, I see the Discord. I see the Reddit posts. Like, you guys are super eager to get it. I completely understand. 
Trust me, though, the wait is worth it. All right, see you at the airfield. Low altitude, low altitude. 